There is no ultimate individual freedom, ladies and gentlemen, as black people, if there is not group freedom. Mm -hmm. The powerless individual is not seen as an individual anyway. That is why we talk about what? Stereotyping. That is why the slave master, or our master calls us what? Field hands. Not individuals, workers, laborers, because there's what? A category of people there. What's going on, family? I'm just here to remind you that you can get yourself a copy of my new book, On the Shoulders of Giants, Volume 4 of the Caribbean, by visiting my website, www.ontheshoulders1.com and help support me as I continue on my mission to make sure that my people have our information even though you know there are many people trying to stop us from learning our history but hey we can teach ourselves and one of the tools we can use is my new book On the Shoulders of Giants Volume 4 The Caribbean remember visit my website www.ontheshoulders1.com to get your copy and I appreciate your support If you don't understand white supremacy, racism, everything that you do understand will only confuse you. Because that's where we're going today. Breakdown Friday. I'm Joseph Ward. He's Patrick Irvin. I know Patrick look a little different, technical difficulties, but we're still here. So we're rocking with the picture. So that's how it's going to go today. That's how it's going down today. What's good, Pat? Word. Yeah, nothing. Man. Yeah, <laughs> nothing. You feel? It's not like you say it. I'm a little I'm a little frustrated. I feel defeated, bro. <laughs> you want to be seen, you want to be animated. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, it lose some of its energy. You know, I feel uh I feel like Stacey Abrams right now. You know, I gave it a good go, but I just didn't quite make it. Hey man, it's all good. It's all good. People gonna be on your head for that, but it's all good. Yeah, yeah. I thought about it as I was saying it. It was like oh well. <laughs> too late. Too late. <laughs> he said it. He said it, not me. He said it. <laughs> <laughs> Not just playing. Hey, so so today's breakdown Friday, we're revisiting Dr. Amos Wilson and this particular clip that we have, he's talking about a power relationship. We always talk about racism being a team sport. That's gonna be a continuing theme through today's show. And we're gonna tie it into the current events that is that are related to uh Kyrie Irving, Kanye West, Nick Cannon. And I guess you could say black Americans relationship with white America, uh, the Jewish community and other communities as well. Our lack of power. So, man, let's not waste no more time. Let's go ahead and get into it. There's a difference in class consciousness and individualized consciousness. And what is going on here today is an attempt to impose on black people an individualized consciousness. And to make us believe that by being totally free and disconnected as individuals, we will be free as a people. That is the very opposite of what is going to occur. The more we push for our own unique individual freedom, the more we will come under the domination and oppression of others as a group. So I want to stop it right there because, in my opinion, he came out the gate swinging. Mm-hmm. You know, he mm -hmm. wasn't he wasn't he wasn't holding the back. Whoever clipped this, whoever found this clip, this was a great clip because yeah, this is he came out the gate swinging. So the individualistic mindset versus the group mindset. Well, we know where we are. We've been talking, we always been talking about the black America. We have this individualistic mindset, the way we go about doing things. We have brought into the idea of I can conquer this by myself. Or I can find my place in this society by myself. And the individual, as he's saying, he's going to state through this, the individual is not recognized without the group's uh, approval, without the group behind it, without the group support, without belonging to a powerful group. We're talking about power relationships. The, those are the relationships between different races and groups of people. It's about power. At the end of the day, in the beginning of the day, it's about power. Who has the most power? Who can dominate the other? We've already talked about that's how the world works. So trying to go against the system behind enemy lines and already four or five hundred years of oppression, going about going, trying to go at the system as an individual, you you're gonna find yourself 
in a in a world of trouble instead of us becoming a power base what you think no yeah i i agree um and i i love most of the things that dr amos wilson puts out and this is this is included um because it's something we struggle with even when we're talking about racism in general in the, in the american society today you know people get caught up we've we both said this in previous breakdowns uh what you know people will talk about how they have their one white friend yeah and that their, their one white friend are there one or two white friends are there a few white associates disprove the notion of uh what right. supremacy right and it's like no you're confusing the actions and beliefs of the individual with those of the collective the collective right is something to and this is why we you know you say it all the time joe uh this is a team sport racism is a team sport life is a team sport uh it, it doesn't matter about the beliefs of the individuals if those individuals are outliers from their group and a lot right. of us get into those outliers and begin to think that with a group this is the same reason why when we're having these conversations and people are like we just need to have the conversation i'm always like the conversation doesn't change anything because right what ends up happening is, right, you have a solid conversation with a white person, and then to that white person, you become the outlier. It doesn't right. change their view of the entire group. It right. changes their view of you. Right, right. But the in that, but as in the in the context of what Dr. Amos Wilson is saying, that their their lens of that individual that individual is just seen as a a a one-off like you said an outlier a one-off somebody who's just out here by themselves somebody who has done something different i guess you know mm -hmm. it's not it's not in relation to the group but that person there you have no power you have no you right. you may have a bit of influence but you don't have no real influence to actually make real things happen in the world or real changes for your group in the world having because having real influence in the real sense of the world having real influence is about being able to either resist the influence or or the power of other people or impose your influence or power on another group of people and we're in a position to do neither right because too many individualistic mindsets because we keep saying we got to work as a group but we under also in saying that and in and in this breakdown we understand that everybody once again everybody is not going to be down with coming together as a collective but if we get enough of us if we get enough of the like-minded people we can do something well to, to that i mean this is one thing we got to understand right the, you can't create change by yourself you can't somebody you've got to gather together a, a group of people now you could say you're at the lead of that group and everybody's following you and that's very well possible but you can't continuously be pushing people away and isolating yourself and thinking that you're going to change the world that's not the way groups work their group psychology group sociology all of these different uh studies fields of, of human science that that look at human behavior show us that that's not the way the world works right. and when you separate yourself from the group like you said you isolate yourself and you become easy prey we're a social species we look at the group to provide us strength and support and we all need strength and support nobody is an island nobody is totally free and isolated we all need somebody so when you step away from the group you become an easy target for other groups who don't like your group or any of these other things, this could be a whole conversation well, in and of itself. Right. Well, I, all I say before we move on, all I say is name me one successful leader from the past, present that we talk about that has that was able to be successful on their own. Name me the successful leader. Name me the legendary leader, the, the talked about leader that was able to mark their place in history by themselves now i was gonna say let me caveat that right not caveat it but let me let me let me uh point out a connection because i've said that before and people will say such and such entertainer or such and such athlete look that, as far as not... 
as far as entertain like the, the the discussion about whether or not entertainers and athletes should be our leaders is a separate discussion. But right. the fact of the matter is, all of those people had coaches, had fans, had staff, had people that nobody done their, it by themselves. Hey, right, people look when an, when a when a rapper produces an album and that album goes gold, five hundred thousand people bought that album. They didn't but go gold by themselves. But it's a whole team behind the scenes to help them produce the music. Right, but even to that, because a lot of people will say, well, nowadays people is, you got people out there like uh, like uh, J. Cole that can make his own beats, lace his own tracks, and mix them down. And, yeah, all that's true, but the marketing aspect, he's and not he's, doing all I, of the marketing. I was going to say, don't he got a deal? Ain't he signed to a label? Right, right, that's right. That's the group. And even but, when you look at people like Chance the Rapper, who came up off his mixtape, or Nicki Minaj, all of the people that bought their mixtapes and talked about them to other people to get them to buy them, that, it wasn't, they yeah. didn't do it by themselves. But but and even in talking about like conquerors of the world, like real people who made real change, people who were able to like really uh, conquer, colonize others. You know, or um, take over somebody else's land or make some kind of social political change, like real change. Mm -hmm. They all had organizations or groups of uh, support behind them. So you got to move as a, basically what, break it down, we just move, you got to move as a damn unit, all right? Move as mm -hmm. a unit. You got to be a unit and move as a unit. Trying to operate as individuals, as we can see, ain't helping. Mm -hmm. and, and just look at our past. We made a lot of progress or any progress that we could have made or that we rather any progress that we did make. It was group efforts. They might they might have had a figurehead, but it was group efforts. So let's move forward. There is no ultimate individual freedom, ladies and gentlemen, as black people. If there is not group freedom. Mm -hmm. The powerless individual is not seen as an individual anyway. That is why we talk about what? Stereotyping. That is why the slave master, our master calls us what? Field hands. Not individuals, workers, laborers, because there is what? A category of people there. Now, hold on. We though. only bother to. Mm -hmm. I want to say this because there's also this movement growing amongst younger. The younger generations, not just blacks, the younger generations that are across the spectrum. This movement to get rid of labels and categories, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that too goes against human nature. These things are not made up to oppress. They're made up because human beings are socially social creatures that naturally group together with like people and form identities, right? That allow right. us to quickly identify each other as friend or foe that's how this works so uh when you start talking about well and then when he goes into saying there is no individual without the group that's very much true the two are it's, it's a symbiotic relationship one can't right. exist without the other the group gives the individual strength Their identity purpose identity protection and everything else and the individual gives the group variety, specialty, and all of these other things that enhance the purpose of the group. What? But both have to be recognized. But think, but also think about tying into kind of like what we was talking about last week. Okay, one of the things that we talk about as black people is finding who we are. Mm -hmm. Going back and re and and remembering who we are that, but that goes to a a group identity though mm -hmm. that goes trying to, group to find our group right trying to find our tribe where we come from the people that we come from so once again it's reinforcing that we have to operate as a unit rather it, it, it doesn't matter like all, all of this other stuff that we kind of put in we you you have a lot of barriers in our place self-inflicted barriers because a lot of people you know they can't get egos out of the way or they can't um realize that you might not be a good leader for this specific situation or whatever but damn it we got i'm kind of frustrated a bit but damn it, we got to get the stuff out of the way we got to get over the humps because we're in dire situations now where we're literally we we have a situation where black americans are literally crying and upset about a situation 
that we have no power to change because we refuse to operate as a group. We're mad at we're mad as a collective of individuals, but as a group, we have no plans in place and aren't working on no plans to better our situation. Well, and see, this is where we go to the the, the conversation that that needs to be had about strength and power, right? The powerful group sets the tone for all of the groups within their their their, their right. sphere of influence, right? Right. Um, and that right now, right in America, America is is a dominantly white a white dominant society. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter about the numbers. Right. Even when white right. people become a minority, they're, they're still, still going to be dominant society. dominant society because they're going to have the most influence, which means that that goes back to this term we talked about before about a minority majority. Yeah, they're right. going to be the less amount of the physical people, but they're going to have the major amount of the influence on society. Black people right, right. now are what we would call a subgroup, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and even that but being being polite we're going to say black people are what we would call a subgroup right we depend on the dominant group to do everything and for our survival right including lanes of communication if we really identified as a group and connected as a group and believed in ourselves as a group the way we say we do what 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 everybody is upset about regarding Kyrie Irving it wouldn't be I'm an okay, issue. Right? It wouldn't because he wouldn't have shared the message that he shared on a pat on a platform like the one he shared it on to cause that controversy. He would have yeah. shared it in a group of people that already identify with him at least closely enough to not have him face this kind of backlash. We put ourselves in this situation. We put ourselves in this situation. Because we refuse to do what we need to do for ourselves, but then we cry. That's the that's the main thing about this situation with Kyrie that 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 has me aggravated is I'm hearing a, a whole bunch of black people who are upset about what's going on. But the most upsetting part is we can't do nothing about it. As a group of people, we can't do anything about it. And we put ourselves in this situation. And once again, we go to our only superpower, which is talking. The, the most frustrating part about it to me is that we're talking about how upset we are with Kyrie, about Kyrie's treatment on the same platforms owned by the same people. They got right. Kyrie in the situation he's in in the first place. Now, I'm not saying that I agree with what Kyrie shared or with the information in what he shared, because I don't. I'll say that plain and clear. But I do think that if Kyrie had a shared that information in the space of black people, right. he wouldn't be facing the backlash. Right. And that becomes my issue because one of the bigger problems with forming a group right is that the individual has to be accountable to the group and yeah. i think that's the part that we struggle with in the freedom that we're looking for and saying i'm an individual is a freedom from accountability you don't want nobody else telling you what you can and can't do right. then at the right. same time you want to be able to tell other people what they can and can't do, hey. and the world doesn't work like that. So I'm gonna say this before we move on. So we talked about this, and you know, me and you talked about this on the phone last week, but we we had a conversation on our Freedom Train podcast series years ago, and we talked about black people being careful about the way we encourage people to be punished for things that they say in public. Because as a powerless group, when it comes back to bite us, it's going to come back to bite us worse than it, than it does for the for the other people. So for, you know, years ago, even like before COVID or during COVID, you know, the Karen thing where somebody say something in public that that is deemed racist, you want that person punished. Well, this is the this is the the climate that we set. This is the climate that we kind of pushed this this woke climate this woke stuff that was pushed it was now once again nobody agrees with what's happening with Kyrie but we got to admit as a group of powerless people we put ourselves in this position a because we never we never came together and we never built and we never did anything as a group and we're still not doing it 
and nobody still has has any real plans in place. But we're gonna talk about that. But and B, we kind of help. I'm not saying we're totally responsible. We kind of help set the climate in saying that hey, whenever somebody says something about us, they should be punished. Especially if they say it in public, they should be punished. Well, we forgot that that's gonna go for us too. And when we're punished, we're gonna be punished even harsher. So. Yeah, and then I would say one thing, right? Because this goes into it, right? The because I'm a lot of people are still talking, making comparisons between uh, Kyrie and even Ime Udoka and Brett Favre. And mm -hmm. I would say, you know, again, it goes back to this 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 statement of uh, class group consciousness versus individual. Brett Favre is a part of a group. Yep. And they're protecting and, him. And they're protect right. They're protect. They what can did, protect him. They can what, protect. Right. Him. What he did was magnitudes worse. Right. Everybody right. agrees with that. Right. But he has the protection of a group, and Kyrie is an individual. Right. He he's black in America, but we don't operate as a group. So that's why the man is out there by himself. So, but let's keep going. Individualize those who are powerful. Individual freedom is made possible by group freedom and by group power. Mm -hmm. It is the power of the group that provides room for individual expression. Powerless groups do not have individual expression and are not perceived as individual. If you want to get the maximum of individual expression and freedom, you must maximize your group power. And I want to say this real quick. In the world. Yeah, and I'm trying to hold back because this is, you know, Dr. Amos is my vibe. Hey, hey, we, hey, we got time. So <laughs> we got the time. So we can go in. This might be a little longer today. This might oh, be a little longer. But look, it, a perfect way to sum up what he just said in modern terms. How many times do you hear white people saying we're not a monolith? Right. <laughs> right. You right. don't, you don't, because they don't <laughs> have to. Right. right? Black right. people are always trying to we're, we're always trying to show that there is variance amongst us as black people by using that statement of we're not a monolith. And you hear that you hear a lot of the minority groups saying it, but you never hear the majority group saying it. And it, 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 it points it lands directly on a point that he just made. Right. That that powerful groups don't have to do that. Right. 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 Hey, man, look. <laughs> you hit it right on the head. We we got to... We got to understand... We got to... We really got to understand, man, how the world has always worked and how the world works now. It's about the group. The, once again, the group validates the individuals. The individuals are nothing by themselves. That's why... Every time something happens to black people, because you notice, and even in the conversations with Kyrie, and it's not like we disagree with it, but at the end of the day, we understand that this is a power relationship. And mm -hmm. since we lack the proper power that we need, the only thing we can do is get on these social media platforms, get in front of these cameras and talk about our frustration, talk about our anger and talk about these, talk about different things that's related to what's going on with Kyrie. But at the end of the day, can't really help the man, mm -hmm. which is a sad situation. Because once again, it's the way we operate. It's the way we operate. We really believe that I'm out here by myself. I got it on my own. I did this. I'm an individual. I'm an individual. I'm an individual. When they're squashing us, it's it's like it's like a colony of ants. We all know. You can kit you could take the baddest colony of ants and as a colony, like the sea food ants, as a colony, they wreck, they wreak havoc. Millions and millions upon millions of ants move at one, move as a unit, and even lions and elephants get out the way. Think about what I just said. You got a colony of ants that can get lions and elephants to move out the way. Now, as individual ants, they ain't talking about nothing. They ain't talking about nothing, but as a colony. But but the thing is, why would they operate as individuals? They understand as individuals, we don't have the strength. 
it's stupid to operate as individuals when you know you don't have the strength. When you know you don't have the strength, you need to operate as a group. Only after you start moving as a group and gain power as a group can the individual operate because the individual is backed up by the group. And the group gives that individual that power. And like, so we're talking a lot about power, right? And my, you know, I'm big on let's define terms. When I say power, I mean the power to create, shape, manipulate, or move. Yes. Resources. Yeah. Right. Kind of like what I said. Basically, what I said earlier, you, you got the you got the power, you got the ability to either impose yourself on another group or resist another group. Right. So in, in all of these, all of these definitions of power should center around being able to control your environment yes. and control your voice, right? right. And right. right now, we have a voice, but we can't control it because we use other people's mediums to transmit it. Right. And we don't even have to talk about how we can't control our, our environment. Right, right. Let's move forward. <laughs> the individual is a social creation. That's why individuals in different societies differ from other individuals in other societies. Because they individually represent their social group. The individual helps to maintain the social situation and helps to maintain the social situation. If you are so individual, why then does social disintegration, the disintegration of a social system leads so often to individual disintegration? People beginning to lose their minds beginning to lose their sense of self, their sense of direction and purpose and meaning when the society itself becomes unraveled. People committing suicide during depressions and other things when jobs are lost. All of those self-made people and self-determining people all of a sudden come in a loose when the social system itself begins. So, and we can, we can just look at the conditions of black America. Black people in America especially after Reconstruction, we had some momentum, we had some things going on, and then the group of people, as a group, as a whole, Black Americans were terrorized, almost re-enslaved, peonage, all these different things that happened to Black people on top of what happened to us as a group during slavery. So as a group, we were broken down. So we can see why, like you said, as individuals, we operate the way we do. We operate in a degenerate state as individuals. And because our, our as a group, we, we have been uh, conditioned into a degenerate class of people. We, we were brought here to be a working class. We were never properly or truly educated the way we would need to be. When we came out of slavery, none of the issues that happened to us has been fixed. Still now, 2022, none of the issues that have happened to us have been fixed. And we don't have, as a group, we don't have, we don't have the resources as a group. There are certain individuals who have the resources, but as a group, because think about it, we're complaining, you, and, and what he's saying is true, because we're complaining about a basketball league who's treating this young man the way they're treating him. And we actually have the wealth in black America to build our own basketball league. And people think it can't happen. People really don't believe we could do it. We got all the talent and we have the money. I'm not saying we got all the money, but we have enough money in black America. We got all the talent and people really believe we can't do for self. And then, and then when people do for self, folk don't support it. And I think I think one of the things that we have to as well understand is one of the other things he said in there was uh, that the individual reinforces society. The decisions we make as a people when we're not mad, right? The everyday mm -hmm. decisions we make shape the world that we live in. Yeah. Everybody is content to go along and get along and go along and get along as long as they're getting along to where they're trying to go along to, right? 
And that's why the status quo doesn't change. That's why history tends to repeat itself. It's because people that don't know it and the people that do know it don't bother to do anything different to change it. Right. So there, even in that, there is a personal accountability piece to the yeah. world that we yes. live in yes. that people constantly want to run away from. Right. Right. Kyrie is being, for those of you that believe what Kyrie, the information he puts out and thinks that he's just being persecuted for putting out truth, they have the same level of accountability as those of us who think that he was putting out untruths, but feel like his treatment is being unfair, right? Mm -hmm. Because we all move in the same way in terms of how we respond to right. the injustices that we see. Right. So, but I don't, I don't understand why we are surprised that a group of people who don't have any interest in us are being harsh. We saw what they did to Nick Cannon. We saw what they did to Kanye. Why did we think Kyrie would be any different? Yes, we don't we don't like what's happening to Kyrie. What the hell are we gonna do about it? Like what what are we gonna do about it in a real tangible way? I'm not talking about who gonna talk the loudest or who gonna have the best uh comeback to say or who gonna say something to rile the people up like damn you told them no from a realistic, real life, tangible standpoint, what are we going to do about it? What's going to be our real world response? We just going to talk? We just going to be mad? We just going to remain powerless? Are we going to get our shit together and become a powerful group of people? Or at least powerful sectors? I mean, I, I think one of the... And to me, like, the whole thing with social media is easy, right? Uh, there have been a number of Black people and organizations, my, myself included, that have created social media out, out um, social media programs and websites and things specifically designed to be safe places for black people. Black people don't go to them. That's part of the problem, right? When yeah. we talk about the accountability piece, right? The fact right. that black people constantly talk about, okay, we're going to create this social, and there have been dozens of them at this point that have been created and falling apart for a lack of support. I right. mean, you know, at one point, I personally even went so far as to work with a group of people to create a black version of YouTube that where black people could go and talk however we wanted to talk and have those videos archived and saved on online in a way that wouldn't get you banned or demonetized because you offended somebody that you weren't really talking to in the first place, right? This was four or five years ago. And, it, so, and I'm not just saying that for me. I'm saying it because... That these are, are viable, tangible solutions to the problems that we keep having whenever we try to voice opinions that are unpopular in the dominant society, but that may be popular in our society. And even those of us that consider ourselves historians, advocates, or teachers, or scholars, or academics, or whatever, we can't even stand up and adequately educate people that we feel like don't have the correct information. Mm -hmm. in, the, in those safe spaces because those safe spaces don't exist. By the time a black person that actually has credible information, and I'm, I'm going to say that, I'm not going to say Kyrie's wrong. I'm going to say he's wrong based off the credible information I have and based off the information that he presented not being credible because he didn't have any sources or anything attached to it that I could verify it with. But so... If we wanted to have that conversation, even about what is or is not a credible source, and I think Kyrie knows what a credible source is, but even if we wanted to have that conversation, that's a private in-house conversation. Yeah. Where is our private in-house area to have that conversation with people who may be misinformed to bring them up to date? But, but also, at the end of the day, let's just be real, at the end of the day, if we had our stuff together, if we were a powerful group, we even had powerful sectors that could remedy a lot of this. Even if he tweeted this out, it wouldn't. He he could have got some kind of uh, probably maybe a slap on the wrist or maybe nothing to happen because we talked about Brett Favre and who he has behind him, right? That they riding for Brett Favre, like we don't even know the white lady's name that. Ime Udoka was having sex with and mm -hmm. 
They both broke team rules. They both broke team rules. We don't even know her name because they have the power to protect their own. We got to learn from it. Everybody's mad at um, Amazon. Well, why Amazon ain't being called out? Because they have the power. Amazon, you talk about the one of the top three richest men in the world, richest men in the world. He got the power. He in the cahoots with the right people. He got the power. Everybody that all these people want to call out and be and be mad at, they mad at all the NBA players and all these things here. Look, don't be mad at all. Don't be mad at them. We need to be mad at ourselves for putting ourselves in this situation and keeping ourselves in this situation where when somebody messes with us, we can't do anything about it. That's our fault. We got to take accountability for where we are in the world. We got to take accountability for how the world treats us. We got to take accountability here for how we see ourselves in the world. We could change everything that's happening to us. It, the, we have the power, but we choose not to exercise it because a lot of us still really believe that because white supremacy exists, and we know, once again, white supremacy is the root of all this shit, but God damn it, that doesn't, white supremacy doesn't mean we can't do for self. White supremacy doesn't mean we can't become powerful. White supremacy doesn't mean we can't change our situation. All that means is in the process of changing our situation, we're going to have to defend what we be. We have to kick some ass. We got to be really willing to fight to maintain what we build because we have a, a historical record that shows that whenever we do for self and we get too uppity in their eyes, they're going to react. Right now, they react in the way they react. They don't have to come out and do it like they did in the in the in the early 1900s. Look at they publicly crucifying uh, Kyrie. Like humi trying to humiliate this man. That list of stuff, like there's the list of stuff they want him to apologize and condemn the movie, do a five hundred thousand uh, dollar donation to anti hate causes, go to sensitivity training, do anti semitic training, meet the, meet with ADL and Jewish leaders, and meet with Joe Sy, who's the owner of the Nets, to demonstrate understanding. And my thing about this, I'm looking at because I've I've been looking at videos of people talking about things that's going on with Kyrie because I'm just trying to get all the information and I'm seeing other platforms, other black platforms of black men talking about being strong, black men talking about being black first, talking about power and building, 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 talking about standing up for Kyrie. But you you're scared to say the word Jew on your platform. Mm hmm. What you want the NBA players to boycott you want to and you know we talked about this in the past people always want the athletes and the entertainers to put their jobs on the line but these people not willing to put their jobs on the line like you want the athletes to stand up against the jewish community but you're not gonna go to your job and stand up against the jewish community until we ready until we ready to really fight the way we ready to fight you can't ask anybody else to do something that you're not willing to do that's poor leadership and that's another problem right the lack of leadership present in mm -hmm. our community um and and it's kind of hard to galvanize or do anything in an organized fashion without that and the, the mark of that is how many people we have demanding that other groups do things that they're not willing to do how right. many people we have demanding that specific groups of people do things and other groups of people in our same community not do those same things. And 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 here's the thing, right? A leader has to be able to convey that message that, look, I understand Kyrie has $34 million and you got $34. But the mm -hmm. benefits that are going to come socially from everybody choosing not to partake in this particular activity, like going to work, are going to benefit everybody equally you'll get an equal you'll get a larger benefit from that than he will because you're giving up more than he is and society is going to balance out if we play the game the way we play it i'm using that as an example but as a leader you got to be able to articulate why it's important for the person that's making thirty thousand dollars a year to not go to work just why that's just as important as it is for the person making 30 million dollars a year not to go to work look when when the group has power they can apply internal and external pressure you you've i'm getting this from you this is what you talk about all the time internal mm -hmm. external pressure you're asking athletes to boycott you ask athletes to do all these things so what the what what are we going to do they're like okay well boycott the nba what do it do it 
boycott the NBA. Boycott it. And that's that could maybe spur to internal pressure. But the problem, the problem is what is our plan? What strategies are we going to use? What's the end goal? The, that's another problem that I have with us is we jump out there and we have no plan in place. We just jump out there because we're reactive. We got to stop being reactive. We're once again, we're in this situation because we put ourselves in this situation. We're being reactive and we have no plan of action to help this man. It, it it goes it goes back to we got to think about the bigger pictures and we got to be accountable and that's a word that we can't run away from and as adults we shouldn't be running away from accountability or responsibility we should be looking at the world we want to create for our children and stepping up to the plate and paying the price now so that they don't have to later which is right. something that generations of black folks seem to not be willing to do right some sacrifices today have to be made for tomorrow if you want tomorrow to be a brighter day we got to work for it we got to make it happen we can't just keep wishing and hoping and saying stuff and trying to manifest we got to work to make it happen nobody gonna do it for us we got to actually put real work in blood sweat and tears to build the future that we want and i want to caveat i'm go sorry ahead. go ahead go ahead go ahead go ahead that I was, was gonna the, say uh, I I want to caveat something else real quick because uh, I know I said it so people might harp on it. The leader also has an accountability to make sure that those people making $30,000 a year that choose not to go to work can still survive. And right. that comes with the group well, the group dynamic. Well, you, know, right. you, you have people making $30, $40, 50000000 million a year and y'all are all in a group deciding to do something, some of that wealth needs to be transferred to places where it's needed so that people can still survive. But that's a part of the deep strategy that's well, needed. Well, it's like, just real quick, it's like people who are mad at LeBron's response. Now, I ain't gonna lie. I wouldn't have said what LeBron said. I would have just said no comment. I wouldn't what say what LeBron, LeBron say. They basically, LeBron basically condemned Basically, like, I don't stand with Kyrie. I don't stand with his stance. I don't stand with um, hate speech and all this thing. Basically, kind of threw Kyrie under the bus a bit. More than oh, a well bit. That, kind of threw Kyrie but that's to be expected. Don't LeBron right. have Jewish business partners? Right. But, Le but see, P LeBron needs to continue doing what he's doing. If LeBron goes down, all, think about all them kids that, that's in school and stuff. We shouldn't be looking at those people to make those type of sacrifices. We should be willing to make those type of sacrifices. Malcolm X told us about not expecting celebrities, entertainers, and athletes to be our leaders, to be those political people in those places, those, those figureheads. We should be those people. But we keep pedestalizing the athletes, entertainers, and celebrities. We can't... Once And like, piggybacking on what you said, they want they want the athletes to, to not go to work. Like, we can support the athletes. We can't support ourselves. We can't support the athletes. Man, let those people go to work, and we apply the pressure that need to be applied. Because, hell, we got a way more influence because if we don't give them their dollars, we don't give them our dollars, they can't do nothing. Stop sending your kids to play for the NBA. There's a lot of things that we could do. Well, and uh, Create that, our own I'm... damn league. Create our own damn league. And to that, I'll say, you know, I agree with what you're saying. I want to bring it back to this collective consciousness, individual versus group thing, though, again. The reason we collectively value athletics is because as individuals, we value our athletic prowess more than we value our intellect. And that's the truth that yeah. I know we've been, a lot of people have been saying it, but as a culture, I don't think we've really accepted it. Oh yeah, but that's true though. If we haven't, we have not accepted it, but it's true. We do value af we value athleticism and entertainment more than we value education and intellect. Intellect. So yeah. So, but let's move forward. Fall apart. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is that social structure that builds the infrastructure of the individual, and now you're going to have some jokers who want to come along and try to make you think that you can be a person totally unto yourself and that the essence of freedom represents 
atomized individuals operating with no relationship to community and no communal obligations and so forth. What purpose does this kind of approach serve? And we have to ask ourselves that. We have gotten people then who want to equate atomistic individualism with freedom. I would say to a good degree, we're seeing this kind of thing going on in the black community, particularly by some individuals in the black community, because we perhaps didn't notice that these seeds were already a part of the so-called civil rights movement, but they were hidden by our focus and our attention on achieving our so-called civil rights and by our dealing with our obvious oppression. For many blacks, if I can recall, who fought during that time were fighting for what they call individualism and were equating individualism with freedom. That That is powerful. What are you saying? Mm-hmm. And I, I, I'm, I'm going to say it a bit different. We equate individual success with freedom. But we, but, but we equate it with freedom, but we don't truly, well, I would say the majority of us do believe that individual success does equal freedom. But I do think that there's a sector of us that understands that individual uh, success doesn't equal equal group uh, equal true freedom because we have the term the Negro wake up call. And if you can if you can get a Negro wake up call, which means you went out here you you trying to assimilate to this white society, you forgot you was black and you really thought that the white folk like you like that, and you can say whatever you want to do and do whatever you want to do. You didn't say it, something done something that got yourself in trouble, and now you get your Negro wake up call. So individual success is nothing more, nothing less than individual success. How does that success help the group? If it don't help the group, it really don't matter because when you're going, success stops there. And is that true success? Is it really true success? I mean, you it may, well, excuse me, not success, but freedom. Is it really, is it true freedom? again we we get into these discussions about how we define freedom and if you know define in terms again if you define freedom as your ability to go where you want when you want and do what you want then you're not looking at the group but you're also not looking at the threats that come with that type of existence because you go where you want when you want other people can do what they want to you with no repercussions. It's an illusion of freedom. Because, okay, you can go to these restaurants until they tell your ass you can't go in there. But I eat all the videos on the internet of black people being mad, the white people telling them that they can't come in or you don't have the right uh, attire on to come in my place. So whenever they feel like telling your ass, or reminding your ass that you are not free, they do it. So there's an illusion of freedom. And that's, but that's, that's what we struggle with. I mean, he he mentioned it in, in his lecture. He said it. And we're still struggling with that because nobody has ever really bothered. Like, and then one of the problems is, and even in these breakdowns, we go a little bit deep, but we don't go as deep as we could, right? So many of the conversations are surface level, right? We need to have a real deep conversation about what freedom is. A real deep conversation about power, about group dynamics, group psychology, about individual, you know, this whole YOLO thing that took off. You only live once. And people took that as a phrase to mean that they should do whatever they wanted to do because they only live once with no right. concept or idea about the ramifications of their actions on the group. You still right. have people saying what I do don't hurt nobody. And yes, it does. Yes, this- it does illusions there, there's a black woman in the world right now being disrespected and looked at as a sexual object because of the music that some female rapper or even some male rapper here in the united states put out because the image the group image the collective image go back and look at the other breakdowns we've talked about this in the past the scholars have talked about this in the past the collective image 
matters. The group image matters. It does. It has always mattered. And it's not going to stop mattering because you come, because we got these new, <laughs> these, these young folk who don't like it. Hey, hey, people, I don't give a damn what times we in. Nobody cares what you don't like if you can't do nothing about it. And the, the fact of the matter is all of that goes right back to something he said earlier in this um, in this very lecture. Powerless people aren't seen as individuals. Right. That's why, again, right. that's why you keep having right. to say black people are not a monolith because you're powerless and they see everybody as one. They even think you look alike. All of y'all mm -hmm. look alike. All mm -hmm. of you dance alike. All of you mm -hmm. act alike. That's why every mm -hmm. black man is a thug with yep. a with a big Johnson that's trying yep. to have sex with white women, and every black girl is a prostitute that's addicted to some drug and got a bunch of kids from a bunch of different men that she don't take care of and don't know where they yep. at. And and the problem is there are too many of us actually living out those stereotypes and proud of it. Right. Right. This new city girl, city boy culture that we got. Hey, and 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 we have to admit too that the city girl and the city boy culture, the seeds are planted in generations before. And so I Absolutely. had these conversations. I had these conversations with people from older generations. And I have I have a greater number of people who agree and a lesser number of people who disagree. But we have to admit that. Like our generation, that's we just didn't wake up one day and say, you know what, we want to be degenerate. We didn't. No, it was culture that was passed down. It was culture that was passed down. It was it was what they call the generational curses that we keep trying to break. They were right. passed down. I mean, look, man, if we being honest about it, city boy and city girl culture is a direct, a direct uh, offshoot from Woodstock and the free love movement and everything yep. else that was yep. going on in the sixties and the seventies. And then you had spring sexual freak revolution and freak Nick and all of that yep. stuff. Yeah. It, it's, it's directly, this is yep. this generation's version of yep. that. It's the yep. same shit. Uncle but Luke, the, all that stuff. But the crazy part is you do have people who see so it's, it's crazy on a couple of levels and i only go over two one is it's crazy on this level right that on the one hand you'll have people that'll say well we did it so it's okay like right. just because you did it don't make it okay and right. then on the other level you'll have people that say that's not okay but not want to accept any accountability for the fact that they did it right and so right. it has to be one of them things where it's like yeah, well, it was fucked up when I did it too. I was young and dumb, and I don't want you to make the same mistakes I made. Yeah. We got to be real. We we contributed to the degeneration of our culture. Yes, I I Joseph Ward played a hand in contributing to the degeneration of our culture. Yes, I did. So all of us have, all of us have, and we got to admit it. And we got to make sure that we work to change it. But we got to be real with ourselves. That's why, I like, when I'm talking to some of the young folk. Hey man, I give my experiences. I be real with them. I I never tell somebody to do something that I still do. Don't do that. Don't do that. If I still do it, I'm not. I ain't even gonna talk about it. But that's neither here nor there. But yeah, I mean it's all the way. Never mind. Fuck it. I'm just saying stuff. Let's go. <laughs> Many we realize now then were fighting to identify with their aggressor, as Paulo Freire says. For many of the oppressed, Kanye West, i.e. Kanye West, I am jealous of the Jewish community. Yeah. To be free means to be like the oppressor. And consequently, there were many of us during that struggle who thought that white folks and their behavior and attitudes, their privileges and so forth, represented what it means to be free without realizing that if to be free is to be like one's oppressor, then the day that one becomes like one's oppressor, one becomes self-oppressing. Yep. And one becomes an ally in the oppression of one's own people. That's how you end up with a MAGA hat on your head. And a White Lives Matter t-shirt on your butt. Right. And then want us to have your back after all that. <laughs>
we like we said in the last show, we have to we have to create our own culture. We have to self-identify. We have to we have to define what it means to be black in America. That's what we have to do for ourselves. But we all but we have to get away from the idea, as Dr. Amos stated, that because we're we're so fixated on the idea that if I'm close to whiteness, I'm successful. Because we can see it. The cars that we buy, the things that we have, the the company we keep, all the all the different uh brands and all these things that black people have, even the ones who are supposed to be conscious and all these things, it's the proximity to whiteness. If I'm if I did this, if I did this, if I did that, and understand we understand the world we live in. We understand that we're in America. We understand that we operate in a white society, and things are going to happen in a white world, in the right in the white realm. And we're not saying don't go get your money. We're not saying don't be successful. Build yourself up, be the greatest version of yourself, but understand that you building yourself up, you being the greatest version of yourself ultimately still has to come back to being something that's productive and prosperous for the group of people that you represent, which is black people. And when you keep operating as individuals, you bring nothing back to the group. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we could, we could change. We just got to make the choice. We could, we could stop being mad. I'm not, I'm not even mad at, at the Jewish community. I'm not even mad at them. I'm mad at us because we keep letting people kick us around. I can't, I can't, how can you, how can you at the end of the day be mad at a group of people who did what the hell they're supposed to do for themselves and who operate in the way they're supposed to operate? How can you be mad at them? You need to be mad at yourself. We need, this is a time for us to look in the mirror. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm so glad I found this clip because it's perfect for what's going on right now. We got to take a realistic look in the mirror. It's our fault. What we gonna do about it? Like I was watching the O'Shea Duke Jackson video, and really, out of all the videos and things that I've been watching, I feel like, for in my, in my opinion, O'Shea is the only one whose thought process or opinion was in line with what I what I what, what I have, and where we should be upset with ourselves, and we should be, our mindset should be changing. And what can we do? Work together. Now understand. This is not going to change overnight. So like we said in the past, in your communities where you live, become united. Start becoming united where you live. Start uniting yourselves in your community. Start getting active in your community. Whatever you do, contribute to your community. Get active in your community. Be the best that you can be. Earn the most money that you can earn. Like Be the healthiest that you can be. Uh, get as much knowledge as you can. Become the best, and we work together. Everybody become a puzzle piece. Become a puzzle piece. Don't be, don't try to be the full picture. Don't try to be the leader. Don't try to be the next this, the next that. That's another thing that's messing with that's that's tearing us down with that individual mindset. Of, I'm going to go out as an individual leader. And you're supposed to follow me because I look black, talk black, feel black, and act black. No, no. Become a puzzle piece. What's wrong? With, what the hell is wrong with becoming a puzzle piece? If you become a puzzle piece and everybody understand that I have to be my best and the next person has to be their best. If we all do what we're supposed to do, we can fix this shit for our future. But what we going to do about it? This 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 breakdown ain't even about us having to tell having to have tell people what to do or having to name solutions. We know what we need to do. This one is to kick in the ass for us to do it. That's all I got to say. What about you, Pat? I feel like I haven't been talking too much, so I'm good. Man, well, shit, we got time, so we could talk as much as we want to. But we're going to be the dead horse if we do keep talking, though. But <laughs> I mean, but at the end of the day, once again, it's a power relationship. Racism is a team sport. This is about building and maintaining group power. They are supposed to put their foot on the neck of anybody who they feel threatening their power. Damn it, we're supposed to do it, too. Let's put ourselves in the positions to not only protect ourselves, but to impose ourselves on others if we need to be to protect ourselves or to even advance ourselves. Have real power, real power. Let's stop the talking and start working. Start where you are. 
and let's make a change. And if we don't, hey, it's only our fault and we can only be mad at ourselves because we made the decision as individuals and as a collective to not do what we need to do. And I, we and we know that ain't gonna be absolute one hundred percent because there are going to be a lot of people who do what they need to do. Or there are going to be a number of people. Shout out to all those people who are doing what they're supposed to do to help themselves, the communities, and the collective. But everybody else, the hell you mad at if you ain't gonna do nothing about it? Hey man, Joseph Ward, Patrick Urban, Breakdown Friday, great Dr. Amos Wilson. If you don't have his works, make sure you go on YouTube. I have a Dr. Amos Wilson playlist on, right here on YouTube. I think I do. Go check it out. If not, type in Dr. Amos Wilson's name. Make sure you can check out a bunch of his lectures. Get his books. Buy his books. Buy his books. And let's apply the information that he and other master teachers and scholars have given to us. They've given us the blueprint. He's literally given us the blueprint of black power. Literally giving us the blueprint of black power. All we got to do is build. Man, we out of here. Y'all catch this next video. Love y'all.